The Hamish and Andy Show podcast, powered by Amy. Lucky you're with Amy. Three, two, one! Oh, it's been a hard day on the tools. Lads haven't even had a chance to talk about UFOs. At school, we've been learning a lot of pointless dribble. Finally, I get to learn about UFOs. It's been a hard day being Kerry Ann Kennelly too, and thank God it's three o'clock and I can concentrate on one thing. UFOs. Mm-hmm. Kerry Ann. <sighs> thank you, Hamish and Andy's happy hour. Good afternoon, everyone. Hamish and Andy back with another happy hour. One topic per day on this show until we exhaust all 27 trillion topics there are currently in the world. And Ham, today's topic is UFOs. On In this month, yeah. 66 years ago, an airborne object Are you crashed. doing it on this month? <laughs> yeah. Don't we normally do it on this day? Yeah, it was hard to get UFO uh, ones. A little bit looser, a <laughs> little bit looser. On this year or thereabouts. Uh, crashed into a ranch near Roswell. The no, most didn't. popular, almost publicised UFO incident of all time. Yep. Well, you and I went to Roswell. Yeah, we didn't Not see a heap of place on yeah, Earth. we didn't see a heap of evidence from Roswell. No. That's going to be like four years ago or something now. Uh, yeah, we did see evidence of weirdos. We saw people that definitely had gone there because they're of the predisposition that they like to see things. Yeah, and that they would be the the the, amp, the, the right people to to obviously be the first to chat to aliens. That UFO, worry, the UFO museum we went to in Roswell has got to be one of the oddest places in the world. Yeah. So much stuff, that all the stuff in there, they were like, oh, this is remnants from this and that, but they wouldn't let anyone test it. And then they would, there was a lot of, but well, we got the real stuff out the back, but yeah. that's locked up because the government will try and get it. Yeah, because everything was, uh, a make, they, they'd made a replica of the real things, apparently, because the real things were too sacred to have out in the too museum. Too sensitive, people will nick, nick them. Yeah, just show us the evidence. <laughs> and it uh, doesn't matter, though. Today on the show, mm. we've got believers, we've got... A few things that are off topic. I've got an incredible, incredible adventure you're going to go on Mm -hmm. to challenge you to make a lot of decisions. But what would you do if someone that you loved was an alien? (laughs) Right. I've written a very elaborate choose your own adventure, actually. There's heaps of different scenarios. So it took me ages. So I really appreciate it if you do it. And uh, um, the only way into this show is hamishandandy.com forward slash topics. Mm-hmm. And we had a lot of people writing in for UFOs. But before we get to all the emails and the correspondence from happy chappies and happy lassies, mm-hmm. I've got something that uh, might a slightly serious side to this. Definitely. I've made a choose your own adventure for you. Mm-hmm. It's now if, I'm after a little bit of a pat on the back first up here because it's a Word document. I've got it open in front of me. Yeah. It's over 750 words. I mean, I wrote oh, wow. all that today. So, yeah, okay. But, uh, I ain't no slouch. Which okay. is a lot more effort than you put into Cookie Lottery. <laughs> <laughs> now, Cookie Lottery so was incredible. We were counting out the number of cookies from a McDonald's cookie pack. So we did get just, over 17. Let's just balance out the work for the work. All right, I'm just saying. That's a lot of, that's a pretty big word count. Okay, good. I'm not going to obviously get to all the words because so, when you select pages, you jump your, around to yeah. different pages. But I'm just saying, they're there if we need them. All possibilities are covered, so you can go anywhere in this story. Is it possible that you would put up this Choose Your Adventure on the, the website so people would... I'll publish. I'll self-publish. <laughs> okay, great. It's, um, it's kind of tailored to you, though. Okay. It's about someone you love being an alien and how you react to it. Oh, okay. That's why I've made it a Choose Your Own Adventure, because sure. I want to see where your brain goes. You walk into a fancy hotel room. Mm-hmm. Music starts to play. It has a fat beat and a hypnotic melody. And you instantly recognise it as the music of DJ Havana Brown, who you have a giant crush on. But when you, look around, when you look around for the source of the music, you can't see where the music's coming from. Slowly, before your very eyes, DJ Havana Brown materialises, playing on silver DJ decks. <laughs> How have you done this? You stammer. Because I'm an alien, she calmly replies. DJ Havana Brown is an alien? Do you run for the door and flee into the night? That's page 46. Stay and talk to her. Page 12. Um, I'd probably stay and talk to her. You can do both. No, I can't. You can run into the night or you can stay and talk to her. But you, you want to stay and talk to her. You can't do both. No, I mean, this is you can choose your own adventure. Well, you don't I, feel pressure. I would probably stay and talk to an alien. I'd go, wow, this is pretty full on. Okay, great. Uh, I'll go to that page but then. Factually, it's incorrect already because I don't have a crush on DJ. You stay and talk to her. How long have you been an alien for, you ask? All my life, she coos. Mm, sexy. 
Have you programmed my brain to be in love with you, you inquire? Yes, and it's unstoppable. You'll always be in love with me until I deprogram your brain. Also, this isn't what I really look like. Would you like to see my true alien form? You ponder what to do. Would it ruin your insane attraction to her? Or would it prove you purely pure, prove you truly love her no matter what? To see her in a true alien form, go to page 55. To decline, go to page 21. I'll, I'd like to see the true alien form because I was stuck around more for the intrigue of chatting to an alien. Okay, page 55. She flicks her nose three times. Of course, you think. Suddenly her, <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly her human skin retreats from her body and rolls up into her scalp very, very fast, not unlike a spring-loaded blind in a classroom or doctor's office. <laughs> the bulk of all her skin now under her scalp gives her head a turban-like lump, and you're momentarily reminded of the hit film Coneheads about aliens who also had funny-shaped heads. You mentioned this to her and she coquettishly giggles and said she hadn't thought of that before, but yes, she does see the similarity. Mm. She asks you if you would like to make love to her in her purest form as an alien. To do this, go to page 19. To politely decline, go to page 40. Page 40, thanks. Politely decline. You begin to decline, but then think, what the heck? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> So you decide to go make to page love. page 40. <laughs> You begin to embrace intimately, and her claws are extremely painful. You soon realise that it's a very one-sided affair, and she's not looking after your needs at all. After she's had her way with you, she devours you as she'll need sustenance on her 1,000-year voyage back to her home planet. The end. The end. (laughs) (laughs) Of all the things... I really would love to see this animated. And you and I talked about maybe... Oh, mate. Through, in, oh this would be huge. Maybe with the watches what you, you and I were talking about as a lovely giveaway on this show, yeah. we have to replace the mugs. Yep. So if anyone can animate... Oh, Ando, that, are you saying that if someone animated this <laughs> and we picked the best one, they would win an exclusive happy hour gold-coloured watch? <laughs> yes, I think that would be good. This is huge. It's the first gold-coloured watch we've given away. It's the greatest prize in radio. Yeah. There's only well, there's none. 100. <laughs> I'll make 100. We have any. I'm going to we make 100. Have, okay. We're going to make 100 gold-coloured watches. Yep. But bearing in mind, we're, we'll give these away very, very rarely. Oh, yeah. Maybe this could be the only one we ever give away <laughs> yeah. for the rest of our lives. That's true. But, all right, there's a gold-coloured watch on the line. If you can animate <laughs> that epic, choose your own adventure. You're the one that chose the adventure. Hey, and today the topic is, of course, UFOs. Uh, Happy Chappy Todd uh, he has emailed in at uh, uh, dot com forward slash topics. He says, Todd, in brackets, grand, grandson of A.B. McFarlane. And who's oh, A.B. McFarlane? That's what caught my interest. He said, my grandfather, A.B. McFarlane, was the secretary of the air department, and he was directly involved in investigating the Tully... Tully Saucer Nest in 1966, the forerunner to the crop circles. Oh, he right. was an alien investigator back in the day. He's Fox Mulder. Todd joins us now. Your family ran the X Files back in the day, Todd. <laughs> one could say that, Andy. One could say that. How are we, Andy? How, g'day, Thanks Todd. So much for contacting us. Uh, this is are incredible. You, are you still in? Are you still in the business? <laughs> <laughs> No, my grandfather has actually passed on, so the the ties have ended. Yeah, right. Is there a mysterious box of, you know, files or something that you feel like you might find in his attic something one day, or just, you know, something that says definite proof, don't show the government, (laughs) something like that? Have you looked through his belongings? We have looked through the belongings, and unfortunately a lot of things went to the grave with him. Right. Now, Todd, I understand you've got a bit of an idea of what your grandfather did, the great AB. Um, Yeah. What was the type of investigation that was required back in 1966 in Tully, which Hamish and I visited? We have been there. We went to the sugar factory there on our caravan of carriage last year. Lovely place. What he actually did, and what actually happened, he sent a team of investigators up there to have a look at what actually happened, and they took soil samples and samples of, I think it was a banana field at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so. I guess the official documentation went out as saying that the report failed to reveal anything of significance. Yeah, so a bit of a no finding. Are people, were people in the area, uh, say the farmer that thought there might have been addition here, was he disappointed with the findings? Did you ever ask your granddad that? Um, I didn't ask my granddad that, but I guess the official document, and I guess the unofficial documentation said that he was a bit disappointed that his tractor 
stopped working. Now, if you know any of the farmers up there, they do say that you never stop your tractor in the middle of the field. Yes. Now, when he got off the tractor to investigate the actual findings, he found that his tractor had, had stopped, and so that was one of the main conclusions that he came to, that something untoward had happened. Is it So we're, we suspect alien play for stopping yeah, the right. tractor. So if the tractor... Yeah, right, he would never stop his own tractor no, in the middle wouldn't. of the field. No, you wouldn't, because everyone no, knows. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> and was there evidence of any sort of footprints, alien-like footprints, leading to a nearby shrub where there was a giggling alien <laughs> who <laughs> might, looks like he might have recently <laughs> turned a tractor off? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing documented. Mm, no, Nothing it's documented. unsubstantiated reports. <laughs> do, do you think that your granddad, Todd, was open to the idea or a sceptic beforehand? I wonder the type of people that the government is sending in. Yeah. I think he was a bit sceptic because, as I, as I mentioned in my email to you guys, I did say that when I was about nine or ten years old, I went to my grandfather and I mentioned that I was writing a book on UFOs. And at the time, he quizzed me about it, and at the end, he sort of gave me a, a dismissal that, that suggested that he didn't quite believe in UFOs himself. But I, of Did course, only found out about the UFO investigation later on, so yeah, it sort right. of confirmed his, his opinion of what UFOs... Maybe he was testing were. you to yeah. see if you were passionate <laughs> enough about it. And <laughs> then you? when you proved you were, he gave you, you know, your own spaceship <laughs> that he found. <laughs> hey, Todd, did you ever, re- 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 uh, ever end up writing that, that book for your granddad? No, I'm afraid he put the he put the moz on it from 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 his reaction. Found a different topic. What what did you end up going with in the end? <laughs> Not well. I didn't actually write any book at the time. I think I was turned off writing from that moment on. Oh, yeah, what a shame! So. I wrote a great book when I was nine years old about me and my friend Andreas uh, flying jet planes over the girls dropping slime on them. So, <laughs> and I later okay. found out that my, my dad was a pilot that dropped slime on women. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had no idea at the t- I had no idea at the time. <laughs> Todd, thank you very much for your correspondence, mate. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Good on you, See you later. Hey, permission to go off topic for a second. I mean, this show will, is one topic per day. I will let you do it once, mm. but only this once, Ando. It's to do with um, your psychic dreams, uh, not the uh, the Powerball one we discussed yesterday. No, um, I assume you're talking about my very exciting. Uh, dream about the end of the year? Yes. Um, for people who don't know, uh, just earlier this year, uh, Haim, you said you had a dream. It was at the end of the year um, where you and I were doing an outside broadcast from some kind it, of water park. It was park. our last show. There was water around, but yeah. it was not... It wasn't world class. It was maybe a bit unfinished. Yep. Um, and uh, I thought it was sort of half inside, half outside. There's Adam people Levine. There. There's people there. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and Adam Levine had turned up to play on the last show. I remember being a bit shocked that he'd come. From be- Maroon 5. Yep. yep. But he didn't come because he was being paid. Or it was a promotional thing. He came because we'd rewritten one of his songs. Mm. Not to be funny, not in a funny no, way, no, 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 definitely not just funny. in a good, we'd made it better. We made it better. Uh, anyway, we were talking about this in the show the other week, and we started jamming it, jamming out. it out, just seeing what came out of us. Um, we rewrote the song Daylight. Yeah. You had a great impulse <laughs> to make it Christmas-based, and I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah. But then when you said the thing, you said the phrase Christmas pud. And then when you said that, it suddenly all made sense. Of course, we rewrote one of his songs to be a Christmas song. Yeah. The, pro- the prophecy is coming true. Yeah. That's why he loves it, because it means huge dollars for him in America. Yeah. You've rewritten it as a Christmas version. Then someone rings up and says, hey, yo, Wet and Wild is opening in Sydney in December. Yeah. And we were just like, hang on a sec, this, this is, is beginning crazy. to be crazy. That's the kind of thing that you do as a radio show is go to Wet n' Wild yeah. and do a show, show for your end of year show. Th- this is the song when we just jammed it out. It's really good. It. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's feeling good. Got my new wife and some Christmas put. Yeah, it's Christmas. There's no time for greed. Because with you, girl, I got all I need. So there, there you go. The song's very much saying that at Christmas time, mm. um, just having the people around you yeah. is all you need, as well as some Christmas push. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Two things are mentioned. Um, Emma oh, has yes, emailed yes, you. Yes, yes. Please tell me there's an update because it's beginning to feel, I know it seems crazy. Mm. 
We have no contact for Adam Levine. No. I, we, can't. We, have, we haven't even contacted him or tried to. We, haven't, we wouldn't even know where to begin. <laughs> and, it, and for all we know, I think we looked at the Maroon 5 website or whatever. He's going to be touring. Tokyo, very so. unlikely he's going to be <laughs> in Australia around about this time. But it still feels somehow, hmm. like, I just can't get it out of my head. The prophecy will be true. Emma writes, hey, guys. I was just randomly web browsing when I suddenly noticed an article mentioning the lead singer of Maroon 5 has expressed interest in getting married. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's feeling good. Got my new wife and some Christmas pud. Oh, my God. Got my new, new wife, wife and some my Christmas new wife. pud. You might as well have said you're going to get married on Christmas Day. Yeah, it's happening, mate. The first time he's always been in pants, man. Yeah, he has. He, it's the first can't, time can't in his time life. Down. It's like a greased pig. You can't get so him. You can't I, I looked him. up. The uh, the article Sports Illustrated model isn't she and someone yeah she's and, some and, sort of model and he's going yeah I've discussed it and I've talked to Chance or someone the other person on the uh, the Voice with him and he said oh he's loving god. marriage marriage is something that I'd consider oh my god Andy it's <laughs> <laughs> <That's good>. happening <laughs> it's happening he. It, I put that lyric in because I thought it was me talking about being married, but it turns out I was just channeling Adam Levine, who, when he sings it on the live show, will have just got married. She'll probably be there. Oh, my God. <laughs> and she, maybe she's allowed on one of the rides. Yeah, we'll get her free rides. <laughs> That'll sweeten the deal if he's listening. There's Andy. Adam Levine appearing on the last show. Heard it here first. <laughs> Happy chappy Jeremy is emailed in international biz from Wellington, New Zealand. Hello. He says, um, let's play the UFO game. How do you play that, Ando? Uh, it's a good question, and thankfully he puts down how you do play it. He said, basically it involves someone either leaning out a window or, sta- window or standing in a corridor, and the other person uh, has to throw something past that window or, <laughs> at, or past the corridor at pace. It's an unidentified flying object. And and the person, all right, in the corridor, the winner has to guess or try and ascertain what it is. Yep. If you guess correctly, you become the thrower. Have, have fun. And, uh, so, hey, I've organised this for you. We're going to go outside in a second. Um, you'll be sitting down the corridor and just looking up. Uh, at one Where of the, have at we one, got the items from, Ando? At one of the T intersections. I've got the items from a little shopping trip I went down the road. So there's a lot of different styles. So any from around like Grumpy Day's office or... Nothing some... from Grumpy Day's office. That's rare. <laughs> that is rare that we would have a throwing game and not use it to nick a mug or something off his desk. Hey, you are now round the corner from me. I'm secluded in an alcove. Yes. Andy, I cannot see you. Hmm. I'm facing straight out into the corridor, a bit of a T intersection, if you will. Yeah. I believe uh, as part of the UFO game, because UFOs are today's topic on the happy hour, one topic per day. Today's topic being UFOs, the UFO game involves you just chucking stuff past the gap that I'm facing as hmm. fast as you can. I've got to tell you what I think it was. Yeah. Okay, you ready for the first one? I'm ready to identify flying objects. Okay, I'm going back to get the first one. Item number one is a bottle of morning fresh washing detergent. First one coming through. Okay. Jeez, so quick. It was yellow. What are your thoughts? Margarine. Was it a tub of Meadow Lee? Close. It's, it starts with M. It's a tub of morning fresh. Oh, <sighs> damn. Detergent. Yeah, it felt like a... Felt like a consumer item. Was I a bit too fast? Was that too? Well, fast I mean, that's one? the goal, though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, this is bit, although... this is just proving that human eyes can't really detect things at pace. All right, next uh, item. I'm going to go for more of an underarm softball pitch rather than. No, uh... don't baby me. I mean, that's the game. Okay. Item number two is a metal bucket. Ready? Yep. I mean, that was quick. Probably a bit of a hint there by the hard landing. Yeah. Bucket. Yeah, metal bucket. I feel like you went off sound though, rather than. Well, I mean, it's a metal bucket, so. Okay. You know. Yeah, you got it. So you won. You won from two. Here. You're gonna get a metal bucket. You've got. I've got a deadlock here. I've got a deadlock item number. Okay. Item number three. And I'm not going easy on you. Well, don't because my eyes are sharp. I'm. <laughs> I'm, I'm zoning in. Item okay. number three you is ready? a vacuum cleaner. I'm gonna hawk this. I'm going to get item number three. It could be a bullet. I'll. Pro- I'll tell you what's written on the side of the bullet. Sounds like, yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of preparation involved. Oh, are you throwing a person? Sorry, this is a bit hard to hold. One second. All right, one second. Do you want to go to a song? 
All right, here it comes. Yeah, vacuum cleaner. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, got it a beauty. <laughs> was it always that clear? I feel Is like it was um, much like we broken a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, sorry. Oh, no, it's for the good of the game. No, sorry to the work. Oh, work. Yeah, yeah, of course. Anyone working here, yeah, so whoever has to use a brush and shovel now to yeah. brush and shovel the entire studio. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's all we've got time for. <laughs> no, no, actually, we've got to go back. And go we've yeah, no, okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back in the studio in a moment. <laughs> Today, the topic is UFOs, Ham. We thought we'd finished before, or you had. I thought it was a great way to end the show. You were throwing around vacuum cleaners in the hallway. and went, oh, that's, uh, I think I, I was... know a little thing or two about radio. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs> turns I was... out it was only about quarter to four. <laughs> and turns out I was throwing around uh, easily identifiable vacuum cleaners. Yeah. It was the UFO game. It is up at hamishnandy.com. Uh, um, what we'll do actually though is put up a version where we won't say what the items are and you can try it out for yourself. Try it with your friends. Mm. Uh, obviously, if you're going there, you know what it is, mm. but um, real fun one for a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, to, to uh, bring this home, uh, Happy Lassie Bridge has emailed in category of UFOs saying, UFOs now family don't stand for unidentified flying objects. For us, they stand for unav- unavoidable family outings. Yeah. She joins us now, Bridget. Thank you for joining us, Bridge. Hi, guys. How are you? Very good, Bridge. What's the most dreaded UFO <laughs> in your house? The most dreaded unavoidable family outing? Oh, well, it was one probably a couple of years ago when we were told we were heading to Adelaide on a trip, but, yeah. you know, not to worry. Whereabouts, there was whereabouts a- are you from, Bridget? I'm from Melbourne. All right. Yep. yep. Okay. And just a bit of a long drive up there and they, you know, we weren't too pleased, but they said, don't worry, you know, there's a chocolate factory on the way. It's going to be great. All right. So what, thought, what's a, what, okay. what brand? Like, like a, a Hague chocolate factory, factory What maybe? kind of factory? Well, they didn't say. It just said some famous chocolate factory on the road, you know. Mm. It I feel like it might be Hague's. Yeah. Hague's is a South Australian <laughs> chocolate. Okay. Okay. Good. And they and so do your parents, excellent peppermint frogs. <laughs> your parents have pledged this. PO Box 418. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so the, the dangle of the chocolate factory, was it close to Adelaide or was it close to Melbourne they were promising? It was it was closer to Adelaide. <laughs> what yeah. a surprise. Did I think Disneyland's so there as well? <laughs> so what, why was that a bad trip? Well, uh, we got there and the chocolate factory didn't exist. So the whole trip, you know. (laughs) I would have liked to think they could be a bit more creative than that. I mean, they clearly made it up. But you'd think you'd just, as as the parents, you'd just be looking out for an old factory or something. You could pull in to be like, oh, it used to be here, rather than just, oh, well. Was there the remnants of any type of factory? Well, it used to be there, but then it, now when we went, it was just a small little shop. Did the shop sell chocolate? Was there any type of kind of redeeming feature? There was, so that was okay, mm. but nothing like we had imagined. What, See, what had you imagined, by the way? Because I think we all imagined chocolate factories to be a little bit like Willy Wonka, where generally... Were you thinking of going for a drink in the Augustus Glute <laughs> Pond? Look, it did cross my mind, you know, the melting chocolate fountains and everything, but nothing like that at all. How did the trip to Adelaide turn out? Did you have any fun in Adelaide? Uh, no, not exactly. We <laughs> then went on to visit towns and stuff, and Mum said there's a fantastic pub here, you know, we'll drive past. Oh, I bet there is. There was not a single person in the town. So. <laughs> our, mo- our most dreaded unavoidable family outing when I was growing up was um, we're going for a walk in the bush. Hmm. And look, we just weren't. My brother and I had stuff to do, <laughs> and Mum and Dad are going, didn't really. come on. You just didn't want to walk We just wanted to play computer games or something. <laughs> yeah. No, we're going to get a bit of fresh air, walk in the bush. And then we just we we'll just walk around in the bush for a bit, and then we have to what go home. Bush? Oh, just out to the just bloody out to the forest. <laughs> <laughs> it was pointless. The best you could hope for was a big stick that you could whack against a tree, and that's a, that's a, it's not a great day. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Bridget. I almost swore. I almost swore <laughs> as I tapped into a, just a disappointing childhood memory. <laughs> Uh, thank you for being with us. That's all we've got time for. Get in the big wrap-up wrap, uh, wrap up from Cackling Jack. HamishDaddy.com forward slash topics for any uh, upcoming topics or anything yeah. you may have missed. The podcast is also there. It's been a pleasure, guys. Take it easy. That was the Hamish and Andy Show podcast, powered by Amy. Lucky you're with Amy. <laughs>